Welcome to today's episode of Places, People, Purpose. Today we're going to delve more into the beautiful and fascinating place of Prague in the Czech Republic. So let's jump right in. In today's episode, we'd like to share what we believe is a pretty unique experience as my mom's and my first visit to Prague was back in 1977. I was 17 at the time and it was not lost on me that my grandfather emigrated to the States from Czechoslovakia when he was 17. How someone at that age could have the courage and strength of character to leave their family and homeland for a completely different life in a new country was beyond my realm of experience when I was that age. I was bright enough though to have at least a small understanding of what that might entail, as well as a deep respect for my grandfather's courage. The reason for the trip is that my grandfather wanted us to go back to Prague so he could show us where he was born. In 1977, Czechoslovakia was still a socialist republic and satellite state of the Soviet Union as communist rule didn't end there until 1989. But my father felt compelled to honor my grandfather's wish. So off we went to Prague, my grandparents, parents, and me. It's interesting the things you remember as an impressionable 17 year old. My first memory is of flying into Prague on OK Airlines. We were the only airplane in sight and the runway had big weeds growing out of it, like it was rarely, if ever, used. I hadn't seen anything like that before. Turned out it was a harbinger of things to come. When it came to the city itself, I have distinct memories of the buildings in Prague being extremely dirty. It looked as though they were all covered in soot. There was also a lot of scaffolding on the buildings but no work being done. The buildings just seemed dark and dreary, which, if you've been to Prague in the last 25 years, seems almost impossible to believe. The contrast between the lively, vibrant colors of Prague today and what we saw in 1977 couldn't be more stark. I also remember the red stars, probably because they were everywhere. Red stars painted on buildings, signs, and even flower beds in the shape of a star with red flowers. As a teenager who wasn't particularly noted for my perception or awareness, this powerful imagery still struck me as oppressive and overwhelming. My family history has some pretty cool stories about a relative escaping Czechoslovakia by skiing out of the country and another family of relatives pretending that they were going away for vacation and then staying on the train until they reached Vienna with only a couple of suitcases of clothes and very little money. We also had relatives who still lived in Prague, so of course we took this opportunity to visit them. I remember going out shopping for groceries one day. Forget about anything like one-stop shopping but in many European countries, it was fun to go to one store for your bread, another to get your cheese, and so on. Here, there were lines everywhere, but practically nothing remaining when you finally got to the end. We waited patiently in the line at the store for vegetables, but what was available when we got to the counter was a few shriveled carrots and some other vegetables that looked anything but appetizing. As you can imagine, for a teenager growing up in the States, it was difficult, if not impossible, to wrap my head around all of this. 
How could something like this even exist? Where was the McDonald's? What I also remember is that even though our relatives had very little, they would gladly give us anything they had. Seeing people with so little, being so generous, also made a huge impression on me. And to this day, some of the most generous people I meet are the ones who have very little in terms of material possessions. I've learned that generosity is certainly not dependent on abundance. One of our relatives had made a reservation for us at a hotel located at the end of the St. Charles Bridge. What an amazing hotel and location. My dad told his cousin that he didn't need to get us such an elaborate room, but apparently most of the hotel rooms were sold out because Prague was a place where East Germans and West Germans could meet each other and spend time together. The few hotel rooms that existed were hard to come by. Because hotel rooms were not usual or abundant, our relatives were intrigued and wanted to see what our room looked like. So they came up to our room. We were showing them around when there was a knock on the door. It was members of the Communist Party and they asked our relatives for their passports and then left. The air was thick with the power and intimidation that they meant for us all to feel. Obviously, all of this surprised our relatives and made them very ill at ease. They only received their passports back when they went to leave. What we also came to find out is that there were stores for tourists and stores for the local Czechs. The stores we were able to go to had all kinds of Czech crystal and other beautiful items. The local people were not allowed to go into these stores and even if they had been able to go in, they certainly wouldn't have been able to buy anything there. It was the same with restaurants. There were restaurants you could go to, but these were really for tourists instead of the local public. It was so obvious that the people were oppressed, but also very clear that they loved their country and culture. They also were amazingly curious about the United States and anything else beyond the borders of Czechoslovakia. Another thing we noticed was a lot of baby carriages, and strollers, and babies. We asked our relatives about it, and they told us there had been a government dissuasion against having babies, which had the impact of a de facto moratorium. Recently, the policy had changed, and the government was actually providing subsidies to couples who were having children. As a result, a lot of couples were having children, especially because they didn't know when there might be another moratorium imposed against having children. Imagine having the government control and dictate this part of your personal life. We also learned that the churches were not being used, and if citizens were found to be worshiping, they would be subject to penalties. We went into some very beautiful churches, and they were empty, other than tourists. They had essentially been turned into museums. Even with all of the oppression, Prague seemed to have music everywhere. We attended several impromptu concerts being provided in exchange for offerings, and this really brought home to us the rich musical heritage of the Czechs. This part of the Czech culture could not be eliminated. It was irrepressible. When it came time for us to leave, my parents called the front desk of the hotel to let them know we would be departing the next day. The woman at the front desk not only knew we were leaving, she knew what flight we were on and where we were headed. This was Big Brother at its finest. When we were all at the airport to leave, the police said they weren't going to let my grandparents go because they were born in Czechoslovakia and they were supposed to report to the police as soon as they arrived in the country, which they didn't do. 
This was quite traumatic for our family as we really thought we might not be able to leave. As we later found out, we weren't the only ones who were being given a hard time by the police. I still remember what a great feeling it was when we finally got airborne on our way out of Prague. Our experience to this day reminds us how lucky we are to live in a country that is free. And this experience will ensure that we never take that for granted. That's all we have for today. We hope you enjoyed this look back in time at the city of Prague during the 70s. In tomorrow's program, we'll jump forward and look at contemporary Prague and all of its beauty and grandeur. So please join us for our next episode of Places, People, Purpose, where we create connections to our world. <laughs>